Are you someone who is interested to design your own PCB by self-learning? Or are you someone who is interested to start with designing your own PCB and learn how to design PCBs in the long run? Or if you are someone who is interested to know about fundamentals of PCB designing at the beginner level, then this video is for you. Hi everyone, I am Vaibhav Sugandhi, passionate PCB designer and technology startup founder. Welcome back to our course on PCB Designing for Absolute Beginners 2022. I believe you have watched our previous video. If not, please click on the i button above and do watch that video before watching this one. Now I am going to walk through four important part of this entire video tutorial. First one, we are going to talk about why we need PCBs. Second one, how we can make them. And the third one, what are the tools we use to design PCBs, generally available tools in market. And also fifth one, basic terminologies. In fact, seven important terminologies you must know as a PCB design engineer in the beginning level. Let's get started with the tutorial. Keep watch the video till the end to know more about this entire industry. Why we need PCBs? First of all, PCBs will give us electrical and mechanical structure to our circuit. Let us assume that we wanted to build any product, then we need to connect the components. If you are connecting them by using just the wires, then it is difficult to replicate it again and again. Wherein, if you design your own PCB, then you can manufacture it in hundreds of quantity, even lakhs of quantity in a less number of time. So that's why we need PCBs when you are designing a new product. In fact, whatever the device that we are using nowadays, all are having a PCB inside. To make our engineering work less or make our production speed more, we are need with PCBs. So that's why we need PCBs everywhere. In fact, fundamentally, it gives a mechanical and electrical structure to our circuit. And that is the most important thing when you are developing any electronic product. Hence, we need PCBs. How we can make these PCBs? Of course, by using a computer and keyboard, mouse and internet connectivity, we can develop anything that is possible. However, designing a PCB is a little tricky skill and also a little engineering work is required for this. We need to have a basics of electronic engineering and basic terminologies to be understood before developing into a PCB sector. So we need to use a software called EDA tools, which is electronic automation design tools or electronic design automation tools, which are very essential for designing any circuits and converting them into a copper design. So we need to use the EDA tools to develop something that is related to PCB industry and then we can get it done by manufacturing house. There are several steps involved in designing a new PCB, but I'm not going to dive deep into that particular topic in this video because this video is more focused on seven important terminologies you must know about PCB industry. So that's why you must understand that there are various steps involved in developing a PCB, but do remember it is a technical work and engineering aspect is essential for that. What are the EDA tools that we can use designing our own PCB? Nowadays, with booming technology and software services, we can say that there are hundreds of opportunities to design new product and new PCBs online. But my favorite all the time is Ultium tool. And also I have used Easy EDA tool and also Proteus. So many other products we have used in our company so that we can design customized product for our customers. However, Eagle, KiCad, Proteus, Easy EDA, Altium, Orcad Capture, so many other popular tools are available in market which are easy to learn and also very complicated when it comes to higher end design. So if you are interested to learn in a beginning level, then Easy EDA tool is the one best. And of course, we are using that tool in this particular tutorial. I hope you will understand it very easily and start designing your own PCB at the beginning stage. Let us talk about the seven important basic terminologies you must know in PCB industry. And the first one is PCB layers. PCB layers is like a sandwich. Assume like a you know, copper layer is sandwiched between a fabricator layer or maybe an insulation layer to create a PCB. If you are using a copper track in one layer, then it is a single layer copper. If you are using a copper design in two layer, then it is a two layer copper. Always remember in PCB industry, other than one layer board, there is always even number in copper layers. So it is like a two layer copper or maybe a four layer board or maybe six layer and so on. 
In India, I know that there is a possibility to manufacture 32 layer PCBs. But in China, we can see that 64 layer PCBs are manufactured. And the fun part is, even though you are increasing the number of layers in copper, the size, the total effective width of the PCB will not be greater than 1.6 mm in general cases. So that is the beauty and that is the technology which helps to sandwich the entire number of layers like more than two layers of copper into 1.6 mm of thickness. Second important terminology is all about sides of PCB. When it comes to PCB industry, most of the people will get confused with the sides of PCB and number of layers of PCB. So number of layers is a copper layer used inside the PCB designing wherein sides of PCB is all about two sides of the PCB. Let us assume that you are using a component and if you are placing a component on the top side and soldering them on the bottom side, assuming it is a THT component, then it is a single sided PCB because you are placing a component on the top side and soldering it on the bottom side. If you are using a both side of the PCB and soldering a component on the either side based on the requirement, based on the placement, then it is a two sided PCB. There is no possibility that multi sided PCB available because whenever you go with a multi layer PCB or even a single layer PCB, only component placement can be done by either on the top side or on the bottom side. It is not possible to place a component on the sides of PCBs like you know left side or a right side something like that. So you can place it on the top side or maybe on the bottom side. There are only two types in sides of PCB either a top side or a bottom side or maybe both side. Third important terminology is all about track width. Track width is a width of the copper track that you are drawing on the copper layer to allow the maximum amount of current that is required for that particular connection. Say for example, if you are drawing a communication or maybe a track from one component of the one pin of the one component to the another pin of another component, then you must be knowing what is the current rating required for that. Based on the current rating, you are increasing or decreasing the width of that particular tunnel or maybe the channel. So that particular increase in or decrease in width of that particular copper is called track width. Fourth important terminology is all about clearance and isolation. Clearance is all about the distance between one object to another object in the PCB. Say for example, if you are drawing a one copper wire and you are drawing another copper wire and the clearest difference between one copper edge to the another copper edge is called a clearance. And you should maintain a certain level of clearance in every design activity because it is international standards and there is something called IPC standard which will tell you how to manufacture PCB anywhere in the world based on the clearance that you are maintaining. If you are not maintaining that standard, then it is difficult to manufacture PCBs in every industry or in every country. When it comes to isolation, it is all about how you are protecting your one component against the other component. If you are having an AC circuit and a DC circuit on the same PCB, then how your DC components are isolated with the AC component and its signal. So we are using a various components and also there is some techniques to avoid the signal jumping from one signal category to another signal category. And that kind of isolation activity is essential for mixed signal design activity. So that's why isolation and clearance are very important. Fifth terminology is all about symbols and footprint. Symbols are the electrical representation of components. With international standards, every electronic engineer or electrical engineer should be having the same representation of electronic components in system. And that particular systematic representation is called symbols. Say for example, capacitor, resistor and inductor. If you are drawing those symbols in the same way how you are drawing in Europe or maybe in Asia, then it is called a symbolic representation with international standards. When it comes to footprint, it is a dimensional representation on the copper board where you can solder your component. When it comes to soldering a component, you need to have a drill pad or maybe the specific place where you can place the component and solder with a lid. And the way in which you represent a component on a copper board so that you can solder it is called a footprint. With this footprint, you can connect the component from one point to another point and also you can solder them firmly on the PCB. Sixth important terminology is all about silk screen and solder mask. Solder mask is all about the protecting layer on the copper to avoid the corrosion or maybe some ionic effect when it is placed in humid air or maybe in action with respect to industrial application. Whenever we are placing these kind of copper boards or maybe the PCBs into humid air and in other condition where it is prone to get coronized or maybe it is 
possible to have a zinc forming on that particular copper board. To avoid such condition, we are adding one protecting layer which is a coating on the PCB and that is called solder mask. This solder mask is available with the different colors. Most popular one is green color. That's why you can see all the PCBs in green color in mask quantity. When it comes to silk screen, it is a guideline for the assembly instruction. Say for example, if you are assembling a PCB, you must know the polarity of the component. You must have the identity of the component. Those all informations are given on silk screen. Based on this silk screen information, assembly unit will assemble the component on the PCB. In fact, this silk screen is also helping us to identify what product it is all about. And even for the branding purpose, you can print your logo, name or the version of the PCB all on this silk screen. Last but not the least, seventh important terminology you must know is all about SMD and THT. Yes, SMD stands for surface mount technology or surface mount devices wherein THT is all about through hole technology. When you are placing a component through the hole inside a PCB and soldering it on the other side then it is called a through hole technology or a through hole component. Wherein when you are placing a component on the surface of the PCB and soldering it on the same surface without passing through hole then it is so called SMD device which is surface mount device. All right. There are hundreds of other terminologies and so many basic information related to PCB industry you must know before jumping into the designing. But again, as you do, as you practice, you will learn more rather than listening to the theory class. That's why I would like you to explore a more number of terminologies with respect to PCB industry other than this video. Do let me know, do you know what exactly PCB wires? Do comment your answer below. I am very happy to read your comment and answer back if any questions from your side. Thank you so much for watching our video till the end. Consider subscribing to our channel linked frequency. Share this information and tutorial with the enthusiast who want to learn this PCB designing in a quickest way. Tune yourself to make a difference.